On today's podcast, I've got an old friend, but one of my most multi-talented friends, John Marsh. He's currently now a business coach and has been for several years um, living in Newcastle. And previously, though, he's run a business in a running shoe store in Sydney. We had a tiny, tiny business together, um, just doing a few weekend sessions here and there for run technique coaching groups. And that was a lot of fun. And we'd trained together also for a couple of Ironman events And he was the one of the few people that I trained with. And we would go on our long runs and talk about run technique and how we could make it easier. And he's from an engineering background. He'd left a corporate job in engineering. So an engineering question that they always ask is, how can we do this better? And he certainly asked that of myself and our run technique and everything that he's ever done. And he's done it. He has made things better. And he completed the Hawaii Ironman in 2009. And he's been a good friend for about 15 years. So it's great to have him on the podcast today and chat about being accountable, how to set a routine, how to set goals, how to make things work better. And I started out by welcoming John on the podcast and asking about what he's currently doing. Thanks, Pete. It's great to be here. Always great to connect. So uh, I'm a small business coach. We run a business coaching membership and it's called Creator Club. And we teach service business owners the key skills that they need to grow their business and to do it with confidence as well. So we work with uh, service business owners from different backgrounds, usually in the first five years, personal trainers, gym owners, health coaches, life coaches, um, usually, you know, small teams, that kind of thing. So it's a lot of fun. And um, we're based in Newcastle. I run Creator Club with my wife. Uh, and yeah, it's been a fun journey so far. And, uh, but where, how you got there, it's been a pretty massive journey from what, um, being born and traveling the world uh, on a yacht, being born in Tahiti, traveling the world on a yacht, ending up New Zealand everywhere. We met in Sydney. Mm-hmm. Just a bit of a, a background on the bit of backstory. That have, the, the key experiences that have shaped you to who you are and uh, why you're so successful. Yeah, cool. So, uh, you know, I think I was really lucky to have some adventurous parents and uh, I was born in Tahiti. They lived on a, a boat at the time. And so our early childhood and even all the way up through until we left for university was, you know, filled with a lot of adventure Uh, dad was a boat builder so we would sail quite a lot do homeschooling quite a lot and you know I think we were fortunate that they showed us a different way uh, of living and alternatives to the standard education system and alternatives to you know the standard model of employment and that sort of thing and we were always just uh, you know a little bit athletic but nothing too competitive in any particular sports and I guess where we met was in Sydney so I moved over when I was 17 from New Zealand to Sydney went to uni uh, and studied engineering and at University of New South Wales and then I met you I think around must have been when I was about 24 and had left my second job in corporate engineering and so that was a big pivot for me. I walked out of a corporate role uh, in Sydney and didn't have a job, was a little bit into this triathlon stuff, needed some money to pay rent, had this degree, but didn't really see a way to use it. Uh, so I got a part-time role selling running shoes at a little store, little shoe store in uh, Northern Beaches. And got into the triathlons and that was when we met. I remember you walked into the store one day and someone was like, that's Pete Jacobs. And so, you know, our relationship kicked off when I got some swim technique coaching from you. And that was uh, the the entry into small business. And eventually we opened a store. Uh, We had our own running store. And then a few years later sold that and then opened a gym in Melbourne. And this is and, always with uh, with Ruby, your wife? Yeah, yeah. The, the first two projects, I would say I mostly led. Ruby uh, is an ar- was an architect, and so she was still in full-time, uh, a full-time position in corporate. 
and but always in the background you know how it is like you mm. you have the support team which plays a huge role and then ultimately we ended up selling that second business as well both of them are still running and uh, i started to work with business owners and that was the beginning of the business coaching which was uh, about three years ago now so it's been a, a mixed sort of journey up until this point but it's all come together nicely yeah, and, and what I enjoyed that we, we spent quite a bit of time training together in Sydney in that time. We were both training for Ironmans, the full distance at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were a really talented athlete. So you were able to do a lot of the runs with me. We'd go on some of our rides. Um, I probably generally swam during the day on my own. You weren't the greatest swimmer, <laughs> but we worked on your technique. We were working on it. Most and you improved. Definitely improved. Yeah, most improved for sure. Um, but on those runs, you had that same mindset of like, how do we do this better? And you know, that, that engineer mindset that you had of, of trying to break it down. And then we actually ended up coaching running to a few people. Mm. And when you're coaching something to someone, you even have to break it down further. So you may kind of understand what we were doing in our run technique, but then when we had to explain it to someone else, how to get there, mm -hmm. That was, you know, the process of doing that, uh, you know, really makes you learn so much more. Have you, so tell us about your experiences of us running, but then how you have improved your business coaching ability or your business ability now that you are coaching it to people as well. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of things in that. One, I would say is the, there's an underlying assumption in business and in sport for a lot of people that things need to be hard. And if you don't buy into that assumption, then it opens up a whole new world of possibility. And I remember running with you and I'm not sure what sparked it originally, but we were like, Hey, maybe this can, this can be a little easier, or maybe we could go a little faster for the same effort. And once I think you it was, so it was when we were reading born to run, wasn't it? Was it the book yeah. around that time? The book. Yeah. 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 That's right. And there were, there were stories of people doing these huge distances really easily. And so once you say, okay, this, this could be done a little bit easier. I could, I, I have some, some upside here, or there's a different way of doing things. And if you have that as a starting point, then this whole world opens up. And I think with the running, what we both happened to come upon together at the same time was like, hey, we both can see that this could be easier. What are we not seeing? And we didn't know the answer, but what it does is it opens up conversation and it opens up dialogue. And when we talk about coaching, you know, coaching is not providing the direct answer to somebody. It's coming from a place of curiosity. And even when we ran those first clinics, you know, we didn't have a huge, or I certainly didn't have a huge experience coaching but we learned very quickly that when we would say to people like, okay, cool. So how does that feel? You know, stand up tall. How does that feel? Can you feel this? Can you feel? And we would ask questions. And I think that that curiosity uh, led to the running improvements. I think it led to the ability to help those other runners in those early days with their technique. And it's the same thing in business. It's like, okay, if we go, if we come from a place of possibility, and ask questions together, rather than me try to give you the exact answer. Uh, we can we can find new ways and we can find new uh, opportunities very quickly, which is kind of cool. And I guess that helps people figure out their weaknesses and strengths. Is that a big part of the coaching process for you? So with a business, uh, absolutely yes. Like there's there's a we talk about. I mean. We could look at any aspect of the business, but one one element we talk about is um, looking at your personal story. And for a service business owner, this is really important because uh, quite often they're doing something that they love. They're doing something, they're working with people that they love and they want to build a business out of it. And so what we do is we go back and look at personal story, look at their values as, a, as an individual, their business values. Um, who they want to serve, you know, getting very clear on their, their target audience or their niche. And a lot of this is tapping into what they're good at, their strengths, what they believe in. And so, yeah, for sure, we, we touch on what they're good at. Um, 
And then, yeah, even things like outsourcing or, or the, how they do the projects or, um, you know, who they hire, all of this is going to tap into their strengths and weaknesses. But, um, yeah, I mean, business is, I guess, is very human at the end of the day. It's very much linked to the individual. So that, that ability to come at it from a coach's perspective rather than trying to have a set exact way seems to be a lot more helpful. Yeah, and so so people can get an idea of your values um, because I think your values are, are pretty important and, and people are going to find credibility in you from your own values. Um particularly like the things that you do to keep the balance. Like I said, that from, from your birth, you've had this adventurous lifestyle and sense of knowing that you need to disconnect from the modern world. So tell us a bit about how your credibility of your values and how you actually put that into practice. Mm. I was doing a program. It was like a business development program in end of 2019. I think it was, I was over in New Zealand and I was sitting at my, I went over to my parents' place, actually, they live over there and I had four weeks and I decided to do this course from this little island that's disconnected from the rest of Auckland. And I was sitting there and I was, I was struggling with my work a little bit. And one of the coaches in the program asked me how I was going. And I said, look, I can do a lot of work and I can put out a lot of content and my business is going well, but I feel like it's not very, you know, remarkable and something's missing and no one's really noticing and it's not really hitting the mark. And he said something which was really helpful. And he said, instead of trying to make your work different or unique or anything like that, maybe I can ask you a question. What is it about you or what uh, parts of you are you not bringing to the table? And what he was saying was, it's not always about trying to, you know, find something different or be better than someone else or do something a different way, but looking at your personal story and bringing that up in a way that can also resonate with the people you want to help. And what I got from that, the result for me was that I started to realize that, you know, for all of us, our life, where we've come from, what we you know, grew up with, for me, it was being on a boat and being in the ocean and spearfishing. These are all a part of us as a business owner. And so when we can learn to bring this stuff out into, you know, our work, into our marketing, into our service delivery, uh, and, and really bring our values out, it creates the opportunity for our, the people we want to work with to resonate with us and to see us as humans and vice versa. And so really what that did is it also made me realize that, hey, it's really important for you to double down on who you are and to double down on, you know, it doesn't mean you can't change or improve certain areas or work on different things. But, you know, if you grew up in a certain place or you, you know, you had certain upbringing, that's become a part of your being and you need to trust that if it feels right for you. And, um, it often means going against what the people around you might be doing. So we work with people say in their marketing. And if somebody really doesn't like public speaking, we listen to that. We say, okay, cool. Maybe we could look at using, you know, doing some writing in your content marketing, or maybe um, we can, we can outsource part of this, or maybe there's some other way we can go about this. That's really resonates with you and your values and how you see the world yeah and and so part of that for you to reset is to go back to that island and and take time out each year isn't it and and you actually do it with absolutely nothing and you've done some uh other retreats where you weren't allowed to was it even read or write or anything at all yeah so you really like to disconnect yeah. and find find that that um Tell us about it. Is it is it the training to, of being present that you find helps so much in the rest of your year when you do that? The first time it was so so. What we're talking about is uh, in two thousand and fourteen. No, it was around when I met you. I started to get into the meditation. I had a Jack Cornfield audio CD that I used to lay down on the ground and listen to 
loving kindness meditation back in the triathlon days, but I was just on this patchy meditation journey. And um, I had a daily practice and I would sit there all the way through, you know, 2014. And then I decided to go away and do a retreat because I realized, hey, I'm, you know, around 30 years old and I've never really been somewhere that's disconnected from everything, from social media, from a TV, from the radio, from a book. I've always had the opportunity to pick something up and, you know, engage in it. And so I was like, I wonder what will happen if I go away for 10 days and have a, you know, I, I followed a, um, like, a, a, I guess, a routine, a schedule for the meditation and that sort of thing. And anyway, came back 10 days later and it just had changed my life completely. And I'm not saying I'd recommend it to people, some really difficult moments in there, but for me, it was completely life-changing and how I saw, you know, my part, my wife, how I was able to interact even with my friends, with my work, all radically shifted. And what happened was, although that feeling fades away, you remember that feeling and you remember the importance of unplugging and the importance of, you know, being mindful of social media and being mindful of the news and all of this stuff from a health perspective and from a work perspective too. And so, yeah, every, every couple of years or every year, typically I'll go away for a period and it's just part of the thing that I do. And, um, yeah, like I said, I don't recommend it to, to just, you know, people as a thing, but it works for me. And, um, I guess it kind of helps me to come back to a little bit of who I am underneath the business or the work or whatever else is going on at the time. Yeah. So you don't become the business you keep your own sense of identity i guess um and at the moment you're doing something to make sure that that happens like a, a lifestyle challenge that you've put in place for yourself and your clients as well um tell us a bit about that and the benefits okay full disclosure this isn't going out to anybody else yet this is just my <laughs> these things always start as a self-experiment first okay. right? <laughs> um so what i reckon so obviously the last 18 months, two years, we haven't been able to travel internationally. So I didn't go back to New Zealand. Uh, we launched the new business. So my, my output on the computer side of thing has been at all time highs. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know what, I need a little bit of what I would normally get from, from unplugging, but in the context of how I'm living here and running this business. So I, just put together a really basic routine. This one goes for 40 days. And, you know, a lot of people have done different habit development things for different periods. And uh, this just involves the things that I know to be helpful for me. So, you know, there's a, there's a time limit on how much screens you can have over the day. Um, there's, you know, certain things that you need to do each day. And for me, this is not about, um, it's not about, you know, losing weight or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's really about that feeling of presence and um, feeling back in my body, feeling present in my body, feeling strong, feeling like I can serve my, the people that I work with powerfully that I'm here for my wife. Um, because if for anyone listening, you may resonate. If you're really into a screen, a lot of your time, your actual, you know, your sort of way of seeing the world can shift and, um, yeah, this challenge was just a way to get that back. So there's a certain amount of, you know, movement each day, a certain amount of walking, a seated practice. So two uh, sitting meditation practices each day and a few other little movement practices uh, in there. And it's kind of on the limit in terms of available time that I've got. But the idea is that, you know, even in a busy lifestyle, we can still make time for the things that help us to feel sane and happy and good and, and powerful in our work as well. Yeah. I love the idea of um, the phrase sort of, uh, if you, if you fast from the word need and change mm -hmm. it to want, mm -hmm. and that, that sort of sounds like what you're doing. Yeah. You're on your limit of the time that you've got, but you want to do that and you don't need to do more screen time. Like you're going to make time for what you want to do. There's nothing that needs to be done. In a, in yeah, a sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. There's like, you can set constraints. And so for me, you know, it's a 90 minute a day constraint on screen time. So we'll talk for a period. That's fact today we're on, we're on zoom as we record this. So that's factored in. And I wrote for 45 minutes this morning on some content creation for some new modules I'm building. And that's pretty much it. So I have had to organize the day around that, that time constraint on screens. And not everyone's going to be able to do this depending on their work. And I've set this up, right? Because I've done, I did an abnormally high amount uh, in the weeks leading up to this. But um, yeah, we can, it's, it's amazing when someone says, hey, you've just got this to work with. And if we say, okay, cool, is what can we do here? Often things are possible and we don't need to sit there on a, on a phone for, you know, four hours, um, mm. even though it may have been common, it's not necessarily normal or optimal. And so mm. these types of things are helpful just to recalibrate. And um, this, kind of, this word of self-calibration comes to me, it's like coming back to yourself, recalibrating, feeling, feeling grounded again. And um, it's really helpful for business too. Yeah. And something that sounds really important is uh, for you routine, but if you, for your clients routine and accountability and, and same with us as, as Jamie and I, you know, as health coaches and you and Ruby as business coaches, the same thing is, is come from curiosity. Um, but also you're there to be the one that they're accountable to. Um, but you've got some really cool tools that you set in place for planning and then being accountable to the plan. Yeah, that's right. So anyone who's runs your own small business will resonate with this, that there's a lot going on and it's really easy for things to, to become chaotic. And when things get chaotic, uh, we can feel stressed, we can feel overwhelmed, we can feel anxious and it's really unproductive as well. And so a big part of what we do is provide structure for people. So the way that we show up and the way that we support people from the very first time we jump on a call with someone who might be interested in working with us is we provide very clear structure and very clear ways of working that takes away a lot of the guesswork for people. And that trickles all the way through into the work around goal setting, um, how we coach our timeliness for our calls and our masterclasses. Um, any guest speakers we have, everything is always very clean and easy. And that can go a long way. And that could be a big assistance for people when they're running a business. So the goal setting work that we do is one form of structure that we help people to bring into their business um, so that they can take a little bit of time and just zoom out. It's not always that much time and work through whether it's a 12, you know, their 12 month goals or visions. Or what we use a lot is the eight week plan as well. So that, you know, I can then break that down into what I need to do next week. We have what's called a win the week framework and really know exactly at an instructional level, uh, the key tasks that I want to get done each day and take a lot of the stress and guesswork and confusion out and allow me to do the work that I love. And then when I'm done, I can, you know, go to the beach or I can do a little more work, but either way, I feel good about that process. Yeah. And if you go to the beach or you do more work, it's doing what you want to do. And I Correct. think if you come at it with that frame, that, that mindset and use those words and tell yourself, and you know, with our clients, it's a lot around the trigger phrases to trying to either you know, help them feel satisfied when they've had food. So they're not just craving and going for something because they're craving. It can work in that sense. It can work in a sense of um, managing fatigue. Like, am I tired or, and I do need to go to bed or do I just need to, you know, put on some good music and get a good vibe going for, and be present. Maybe they're feeling tired because they're anxious about all these things that are about to happen but changing the words that you use around what you're going to do and like simply going to the beach or doing more work, it's not a tough decision. It's as long as you do the thing that you want and you have that mindset of, I want to do this. Absolutely right. Um, we, in our win the week framework, which is a weekly meeting, you can set it up just with yourself. Uh, the first, the, the very first question, there's only four questions. It's designed as a 30 minute framework. 
And the very first question is around gratitude. You know, we've talked a lot about this. Um, there's a question around what are my weekly goals? There's a question around uh, notes of appreciation. So who can I reach out to this week and show my appreciation? But what we're really getting at here is, hey, we, we get to do the work that we love uh, with the people that we really love to work with. We get to make a positive change in the culture that's super exciting. You know, I don't, I don't, you don't need to buy into the, the narrative that life needs to be hard. Um, we're going to all face challenges and some of us more than others at different times and that's okay. But generally training the capacity to see possibility and positivity in your work and, and that we're lucky to be doing it and we want to do it is really, really powerful. And we see this with a lot of the people we work with when people can get that and start to get on that front foot, it makes the business exciting. Uh, it, it grows, the business grows because they put more energy into it. And their clients are happier too, because the, the business owner shows up in a way that's really powerful and, and transmits that energy through the business. Yeah. And it relates to the, the mindset of, are we, are we stuck sort of being who we think we are or can we become something greater and that whether it's the business becoming what we want it to become but we have to change for that business to become something else or we have to change for us to achieve our exercise goals or to reduce our levels of anxiety or whatever we actually have to change the way that we think and who we think we are and the word quiet confidence, you know, is a word that's one of my favorites or a phrase. And I guess that happens a lot with the people that you work with is as well as helping them see who they want to become. That's right. You know, I think we, you know, we could get a little bit philosophical here, but I, I guess we kind of exist as this collection of past experiences and memories and you know, so if we set a goal together and we want to do a certain thing in our business, uh, you're going to come out the other side of that as a different person, a changed person. You're going to walk differently. You might walk a little taller, a little more confident, and you're going to be changed. You're going to have a different outlook on life. And so we can, we can choose a different narrative, a, a different story, a different way of seeing the world. Sometimes I call it, you know, being willing to try, try a new narrative on. Hey, are we willing to, you know, are we willing to try on the narrative that you're a successful business owner? If so, cool. What would a successful business owner do? Well, they might set a goal. Great. Let's sit down. Let's set a goal together. We can do it in an hour. And we set a 12 month goal. And then sure enough, we get to break that down into an eight week plan. We get to look at the first week and go, okay, cool. Well, if we do these three tasks tomorrow, we're actually on the way to becoming that person. And we've actually taken the action we need to support this new narrative. And we're providing the proof that helps to transform how we see ourselves. So we can then walk differently. We can, you know, and the whole world around us can change. Uh, but it really does always come back to that being willing to try it on, being willing to be curious, being willing to see the possibility and we can, we can provide support for that, but ultimately that comes from the individual. You know, that's a powerful thing that the individual can do. And what, what do you do if the individual is struggling to do that? What are your, your tricks? Uh, again, we like to use curiosity, you know, ask questions. And sometimes it's not always, um, it's not always comfortable, you know, when we try to recalibrate our relationship with our own abundance or with possibility. Like if I'm not able to see my own abundance or my own possibility, you try to help me with that. It's not always comfortable. You know, there's some, some difficult moments, but given time and given some patience and given, um, you know, the right questions, usually we can step through it. And sometimes, you know, um, I was on a call earlier today and a guy had a few questions and the answers to these questions, I couldn't give him. They had to come from himself. And so we've just left it with his homework for the next seven days is to just give it some space and just to see what comes through him as he thinks about the next move in his business. 
we can look at a bit of strategy, but ultimately uh, some of these things have to, you know, we have to give space for them to come through. Yeah, it's amazing how similar a, a shift in the way that you think it's so similar, whether you're training for an Ironman or any, any exercise goal, athletic goal, or whether you're trying to shift and be more successful in business as well. Um, yeah, the similarities of what roadblocks have we got subconsciously and how do we, how do we get rid of them? Um, and that's where I've learned doing this, the health coaching course with Precure that we've done recently is amazing how you realize, wow, if someone just, cause you, you do the sessions in practice. So I was getting, I was the client in the practices and I was talking about tiny little things of, well, I'd like to just get to bed with enough time to read before I feel like I'm so tired. I'm asleep. I just want to read every night. And when you've got a good coach asking like, so how would that make you feel? And, and how would you achieve that? And why would that, why do you want to do that? And they ask you these questions. And suddenly I was like going really deep into my own subconscious yeah. and I yeah. loved it. And I really, yeah. really love it because, and that's why I would enjoy getting interviewed by people like uh, Bob Babbitt or other people about my career, because when you've got to delve into your own thoughts to come out with an, an honest and open answer. It's a really, you know, it, it can be a once in a lifetime experience that you never get to have otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, have you, have you been on the receiving end of that yourself? Have you been able to be the client in, uh, in some good business coaching sessions that you got a lot out of? Yeah. Yeah. I've had um, different coaches and mentors for years and they, for all sorts of different reasons, you know, direct business coaching or consulting where it'd be more advice based, um, which has been very powerful too. And sometimes that can bring through those realizations in a different way. Uh, after you put, you know, that advice into practice, sometimes you realize things about yourself. Mm. And then also with, you know, personal coaching and mentoring as well, where it's been a lot more open-ended uh, and a lot more curiosity based and with business coaching, usually it's a bit of a blend, you know, at the end of the day, the business is there to make money and to grow as a business quite often. So our dance a lot of the time is, okay, how can we provide quick wins and, and frameworks to help somebody get a result and allow enough space for, you know, uh, realization to come through and for that process or the learning process to happen organically as well. And there's a little bit of both that, uh, you know, is important in the business setting. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's just such a fascinating space um, as a coach and, and in any sense of the f word as a coach, um, but you're also a podcaster as well. So I want to touch quickly on that. You do similar to what I've been doing where it's just, you know, solo shows, just giving um, a bit of an in-depth review on, on one topic, but you just give some great advice on, on, business coaching, but it's also, as we've been talking about all the things around mindset shifting um, and just routine accountability and those things. And, but yeah, tell us some, um, it just a couple of things, a key couple of key things on around the podcast that you've been doing a um, couple of highlights. The podcast itself I always say, and I've said this for years, I think everyone should do at least a season of podcasting. I think that as it doesn't matter what you might be, a, you know, I'm going to I'll speak about this from a business perspective. You might be a gardener, you might be a own a hair salon, you might be a personal trainer or, or run a bank putting together 12 episodes or a year, whatever you want to do of a podcast is going to teach you skills in communication. It's going to teach you skills in time management, production, a little bit of technology. It's going to teach you how to speak clearly. So for me, the podcast started as an experiment just with solo episodes and a few interviews. And I think it's at 138 episodes now. And it's been a a big journey of, of just growth, you know, of development. It's been amazing to meet people along the way. I don't know if I could single out anything in particular as a highlight, you know, there's been some cool conversations with 
you know, all sorts of different people. And a lot of it's business related for small business. But I think just generally, I would say there's so much value that trickles way out into other areas of your life that it has been a really worthwhile experience. Yeah. And, and building confidence in any way, like if you learn a new skill and you, and podcasting is definitely a new skill um, and one that, you know, we, we are both constantly trying to improve at and get better at that. It really builds confidence as well. And you become more adept at doing more and more things. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm totally behind you that, yeah, if, if you're a business and haven't tried it, but think you've got some time and if you've got enough information to write even a couple of blogs, then that's this, that's what would become a podcast. Um, yeah, it, it's awesome. Good, great advice. Um, so John, I'm probably going to wrap it up here. We've covered heaps of our stuff and we've been going for a while. So where can people find you and anything else that you want to leave us with? I think we've covered plenty uh, for now. So people can find us at creatorclub.link. That's the website for the small business coaching work we do. There's some cool little downloads that people can get hold of the win the week framework. If you're looking for a simple tool to be a little more productive each week without the fancy apps and that sort of stuff, you just want a clear plan. That's a really helpful one that we get some great feedback on that's up there on the site. Uh, I'm on Instagram a little bit. Uh, that is at John T Marsh. And that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I've been using the when the framework um, plans, those simple four questions. Um, and yeah, it's really good and, and totally aligns with those key key aspects of have some of your that sense of gratitude that you can build around so that you can be be more present, so that you can remain in that confident mindset, so you can see where you're heading all the time and that positivity. And as you said, the the possibilities love that um the possibilities of where you can go and that is just gonna have you yeah achieving all those goals that you can set as well so yeah highly encourage you if you um i know you got an intake going on in june is it the next intakes in june 2021 uh early july early this july year is our next intake yeah so we we do we do eight week periods which allows us to really focus for those eight weeks on the eight week plans with the businesses in the group uh but yeah july 2021 yep awesome yep. and i was on john's podcast around this same time we are in <laughs> what a month are we in i got a look at it may we're towards the end of may here and i was on john's podcast which will be coming out probably in um early june so check that out we had a great chat about um goal setting and flipped it around he was asking me the questions about goal setting and yeah it was awesome to recap some of the great times we had together training and i definitely you know i didn't train with many people in that time in that those four years where i went top 10 in hawaii um but john was one of the few people that i spent any time with at all training with um so he obviously had some some good invite in uh, input um great vibe and those conversations as he said like being a coach is just about opening up that dialogue you know i love the way that you put it opening up the dialogue to figure out how can we do this better and that's an absolute that's got to be out of the engineer's textbook is it just there's ask, a there's a question what better? yeah what does better look like and when you say it it's easy to be defensive and think oh you know what it's not good enough or any of that and it's totally not from that side at all. What does better look like is really about possibility. And we say it, we can say it in a totally neutral stance, but it can lead to um, business growth. It can lead to a better relationship. It can lead to being able to run a little bit faster, right? Like it, it opens up a whole bunch. Yeah. And if you're in the right um, state of mind and you're open and you trust and you believe, then when someone asks you, can you do that better? You, you're not offended. The person who's in that state of mind around possibility, then if you ask them, how can you do that better? They won't get defensive, as you said. And I think I'm listening, referring to a podcast that I heard you on earlier that I was listening to this last week. Um, 
that, yeah, they won't get defensive. They'll actually be like, oh, yeah, well, let's have that conversation. And that's, that's just an awesome conversation to have if you can get someone who's not defensive and wants to really question everything that they thought that they knew was perfect and going along, open up that conversation of like, yeah, how can we do it better? How can we make it easier? So yeah, I definitely learned that from you, John. And um, yeah, got, got to thank you for my top tens in Hawaii um, when we were training together, for sure. Uh, you, you're too generous, to be honest. I was just <laughs> hanging off your heels most sessions. That's about the best I can do. Yeah, was, and you went to Hawaii in what year? 09. 2009, finished the Hawaii Ironman. So yeah. he's, he's a bit of an all-round freak. He can do everything um, as well as run a gym, be very good at all those aspects of fitness, strength, aerobic capacity. Yeah, he's um, a bit of a legend, can learn anything. And yeah, so thanks very much for joining us, joining us, John. It's been uh, great to chat to a person of so many talents as you said. I appreciate, I appreciate your time, Pete, and thank you for the invite. We'll have to do it again soon. Cheers. Thanks, John.